This is Andrew with Android Central, and we're taking a look at Samsung's flagship for 2015. It's the Galaxy S6. Hoping to gain maximum momentum after a year in which competitors really caught up against the lackluster Galaxy S5, Samsung has pulled out all the stops with a ground-up redesign in the S6. While the phone looks a bit like the old generation at first glance, the difference in materials and precision just can't be overstated. Brilliant panes of Gorilla Glass 4 adorn the front and back of the device, with smooth edges rolling nicely into a solid aluminum frame that goes straight through the phone and out around the edges. Though it isn't the friendliest to hold on to, this is finally a piece of hardware from Samsung that really is worthy of the price tag. No longer can we say that Samsung is cranking out high-end phones that just feel like toys. The Galaxy S6 goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best. And the quality carries on to the display, where you'll see a high-end Quad HD screen at a comfortable 5.1-inch size, which includes all the same great qualities as we saw on the Note 4. Super high brightness, good color reproduction, and wide viewing angles. That great display shows off a streamlined and improved version of TouchWiz. Samsung says it worked on the overall experience and pared back unnecessary features by 40%. And while most of the interface is stepping in the right direction, it still feels weighed down by the baggage of previous TouchWiz versions. You'll find plenty of funky drop shadows and old looking icons right next to brand new and beautiful apps. The entire interface is still lacking a little cohesiveness that you currently find on other phones. The new Exynos OctaCore processor and 3 gigs of RAM have no problems pushing around the new lighter interface, and Samsung has managed to clean up some of the consistent slowdowns in multitasking and app launching from previous phones, while also keeping up single app and gaming performance. We did find some random short bits of lag when doing some of the most mundane tasks though, which unfortunately detracts from an otherwise enjoyable software experience. But you won't find a single slowdown in the camera where Samsung has really hit it out of the park. A double press of the home button at any time, even while locked, launches you into the camera in less than a second. There you'll be taking 16 megapixel photos that are brilliant in the daytime and just as importantly hold up when in low light situations thanks to an f over 1.9 lens and optical image stabilization. The camera interface is easier to use for beginners while also offering a pro mode for enthusiasts, and even the settings have been simplified to just a single page. With all that power and all those features and a svelte Galaxy S6, one thing had to give, and unfortunately, yes, it's the battery life. Normal users will be able to get about 14 hours on a charge out of the Galaxy S6, and that's without using one of Samsung's power saving modes. But if you hit the phone hard, it can easily die in just 11 hours. That just won't be enough for some people, including myself. But you'll have to weigh in the fact that the GS6 supports both leading standards of wireless charging, as well as Qualcomm's Quick Charge 2.0 for fast battery top-ups. With the Galaxy S6, Samsung really has stepped up its game in terms of hardware to match the competition, while also steadily improving its software and providing one of the best camera experiences available today. Throw in the fact that you can also get a GS6 Edge with a curved display and a few neat software features, and we're really looking at one of the most interesting devices as a complete package from Samsung in some time. Even including small quips with the software and battery life, Samsung really has a winner on its hands with the Galaxy S6.